Don't record me putting it back in. Hello again, YouTube. Today we're working on two ball joints and an outer tie rod end. Got the wheel off, car up by jack stands, all of that funny business. Got stuff kind of loosened up, but this is how I go about replacing a ball joint. Get the uh, caliper and bracket and all that stuff out of the way. I've already undone all of my ABS wire. Got this down out of the way so we don't rip or break anything. I try to do this quick because I've got to be to my other job pretty soon. Take the whole bracket assembly. I've already loosened up the brake pads. The C-clamp, take the whole assembly, just set it right on top of the sway bar, be out of the way and safe. I already got my axle nut off. You're going to need to push that out. Pull the pinch bolt out of the top. Two 10 millimeter bolts right here to hold your brake lines. They're pre soaked. Gotta be kind of careful with these. Make sure I'm going in the right direction, too. If I had tried doing that by hand with a wrench, that would have snapped right off. So we got the knuckle all undone, the top, the axle loose, got the bolt off the bottom. I don't know if the camera can get in here or not, but down underneath right here, there's a little lip. And right now, just to be able to utilize that lip, I'm going to put the ball joint the top back in place. sort of all right now what you want to do is find something you can jam right in there nice and tight Sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't. And then put the jack underneath the ball joint side. And jack it up. Don't go too far off your jack stands because you don't want this thing crashing down too hard. That might have done it. Might not have, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't look like it did. Nope, I'll let it back down, try again. Yeah, 
see if I can find something that fits better. I thought I had something that fit better. Found my hammer in there. Why not? Anything that fits in there tight. And that made it pop. And the caliper fell down. Put that back up. Now, I believe that was what I wanted. Looks like it dropped down. Yeah, I think it did, but I'm not sure. Yep, it popped. Now nothing's left attached. Again, careful with the EBS. All right, I'm gonna set this right off to the side for now. There's our ball joint. And these are a peen in. So what we need to do is grab a chisel and push the peens back. Hit it with a wire brush, clean it up a little bit. Be careful of this axle. Having a settling torch make things a lot easier. Let's 
Stop recording again. Don't record me putting it back. Pound it out. I'll clean up this hole. That's a factory ball joint. Key and zerk fitting. Our new ball joint. There's a reference mark on here, which I believe is for facing outward. If I'm not correct, somebody get in there and let me know for sure. The ball joint goes in from the bottom. I had a fitting that the piece that doesn't quite fit, but I had to square it a little bit to keep it from dropping in. Get some sandpaper. to help slide it in. I'll we'll get it up here. That reference mark towards the outside again. And then a smaller hammer. I'll do a just enough to get stay in there. And it's important that you get it started straight, so you gotta be careful. This piece does not want to fit right. right there. going to be able to go about a quarter of an inch in with this one. Alright, I've already gone as far as I can with this adapter in place. These particular seat presses can be rented in almost any auto parts store. It comes with a variety of adapters and you'll find that you'll have to switch them out, diff different kinds of adapters through the process. See, we're all the way up to the top, almost to the top now. So put this cap on and repeat the process.
Trying to go cockeyed? Yes, we are. Off just to not sure my cap is in the right place. There we go. Ball joint is now in place. Snap ring on. And make sure it's seated. Grease it's zerked in. Point it towards the rear of the vehicle or towards somewhere away from the wheel. That way there you can get to it. Take your whole control arm assembly. Set the over the ball joint. Nut and a couple of turns. Yeah, we'll put the upper back in. Pinch bolt back in. Helps to have a battery. Oh, it's getting tight. Dum dum. Probably help to put the axle back in first. Bet you all caught that one. Mm -hmm. Remember to put your axle back in before you put the knuckle back in place.
And the nut on the bottom. Okay, now you also want to make sure that the hole for your cotter pin is lined up where you can get your cotter pin in it. That's probably helps if I just figure out what I just did with the cotter pin. Now, figure out where the hell that hole is. Grab my little screwdriver. Fits through the same hole as the key the keys do, cotter pins. There, I can position it. Never trust my impact all that much. I always make sure that they're tight, I'm not so tight that nobody will ever get them back out again. And the little bolts. one one bolt this side someplace brake line holder back in place a little anti-seize on the bolts these are very very well known for breaking off Coating them with anti seize. The next guy that works on this will thank you. Right, 
10 millimeter go. And you see also makes them go back in so much easier. Bolts are only here to hold it. It's light pressure to keep it tight. And you start routing the ABS line back up through. Under the brake line. Snapped into that holder. And on this side, the little plastic thing just fell off. There it is. Alright, why well, won't we stay locked? Wiring is horrible. All right. And a big honking axle nut socket. Take a screwdriver in the ribs of the rotor, and it'll lock your rotor for you.